I actually almost didn't answer the phone because I thought it was a scam call. Voight took a drink from his hot tea. The weather was nice enough to sit outside with a scarf and heavy jacket. Voight had a light blue scarf wrapped around his neck with a dark maroon jacket draped over his shoulders, making his thin features appear even smaller. Red wore a heavy green overcoat, its rough texture bristling with each movement. They settled on meeting outside of Hugo's Cafe, a middle ground between where they lived. It was one of those businesses that claimed to be nearly a hundred years old and made you question if that number was true at all. Despite the outdated bubble letters, the place had good coffee. Red ordered his black and added a single packet of sugar at the self-service station. Meanwhile, Voy ordered an herbal tea, which they served with a fancy cup and plate. It rattled in Voy's unsteady hand as the main character and narrator made their way outside to the seating area. Like I said, there might be some merit to what you're proposing. I need to hear it all the way through, though. Red took a drink from his bitter black coffee. He gave me an overview back at Scrolden. So I'm here now. I took the bait. Lay out everything. Yes, alright. Boy's voice wavered. He set down his tea so her could gesture with both hands while he talked. Every culture has their own preferred medium of connecting with the world of the authors, right? Intera has a culture based around computer games. Still amuses images and text in graphic novels and comics. H here in Literarium, we stick to the written word. And then there's Thespia. You yourself mentioned it the other day. Mentioned it. The black coffee scorched his tongue and burned its way down his throat. Can't say I know much anything about it. That's the thing, Voy pointed. There's such an isolationist country. No one outside of it knows much anything except that their preferred medium is film and theater and, and the like. And this country you know next to nothing about factors into your little plan because... Voy took a second trying to collect his thoughts. A car rushed past on the street, sending a flurry of autumn leaves spiraling and twisting into a miniature tornado on the sidewalk. Well, have you thought about it? When we watch a movie, we're not seeing the face or hearing the voice of someone from our world. We're seeing the face of someone from theirs. From all the authors. was going. He set his coffee down and folded his hands. That sounds creepy as hell, Red said. I, I don't know exactly how it works, but what I said in the office, you want to go to Thespia to see if there's some way to bond you and your own author for some kind of audio web series thing. Tires slashed over fallen leaves in the street. Most ended up clogging drains, while a few stray ones took flight and clung to Red's overcoat. In the park across the road, a dog owner's German shepherd barked at a squirrel. Inside the cafe, the boys passed up a customer order. All of these things transpired, and Red still couldn't formulate a response. I know it sounds crazy, but it sounds straight up mental. But I really believe it. You and every other starry eyed dreamer from here to stay. Voy took a deep breath. I'm not asking you to do this for free, Mr. Cloud. Red cocked an eyebrow and... Red cocked an eyebrow as tilt the last of his coffee back. He set the empty... <laughs> he set the empty to the side and looked at the fiery snowflake. The main character gave the guy a scream that he came for money. But he looked far from destitute. It wasn't really any of his business whether the money was in his own pocket or rich parents. Whether I thought your plan was crazy or sane, I wasn't planning on taking you on as a client for charity. The boy shook his head. No, no, I wouldn't expect you to. But if I'm able to come up with a moment, I send his puppy eyes on red. Go with me to Thespia? That was the million dollar question, wasn't it? Not only was Red being asked to this whole story, but also go on a transoceanic journey to a country that outsiders have precious little information. And besides pay, what was Red getting out of this? Thea flashed in his mind for a brief second, although he wasn't sure if it was him or if she happened to read his mind from the other side of town at that moment. Was he sitting here with his main character to prove her wrong about all the NaNoWriMo protagonists he was involved with? Was he here to atone for what happened to them? Red shook his head. That wasn't it. He was
was getting old, and I wanted to recapture the thrill of penning stories of dangerous-looking main characters, diving headfirst into the unknown. Yeah, that was his character arc. If the price is right, kid, he folded his hands. Yes, I'll go to Thespia with you. Somehow, a boy's wide eyes managed to widen in excitement, and a grin spread across his face. R really? You really mean it? I've got a few conditions, though. Oh, uh, of course, of course. J just name them. First off, Red held up one of his thick fingers. Everything you said about Thespia, I don't like it. So at the first sign I think shit's about to go sideways, we cut it there. I'm not getting wrapped up in some government conspiracy or spy thriller crap. Boy nodded in agreement, consenting to the first term, picking a piece of lint from his sleeve. Red continued. Secondly, I don't want any part of this weird-ass bonding theory thing you have rattling around in your brain. I'll do what I do best and narrate. I don't want anything to do with this YouTube scheme. Again, Voy agreed with enthusiasm, crossing his heart that he would not drag Red down any rabbit holes to do a thespian weirdness. Red raised a third finger. Lastly, and this is my biggest stipulation, he said, this is a business venture, a partnership and that's it. We stay away from getting too familiar or anything like that. Voy's expression shifted, slightly off-put by the final term. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm serious. Red's face was hardened. This isn't permission for foreshadowing a heart-to-heart -heart moment later on or whatever. If this doesn't work, if your author doesn't finish your NaNoWriMo story, then I cannot take responsibility. Are we clear? Although he looked slightly shaken by Red's intensity, Voice swallowed and shook his head. Red leaned back. So long as we stick to those rules, then we can get this in writing, Red said. I'll let Rebecca know I need a contract drawn up. Voice sipped on his tea, which had already grown cold in the chilled air. The open umbrella cast shade. The open umbrella cast shade that made their seating area blocked out. Oh wow, I really messed up this sentence. The op the open umbrella cast shade that made their seating area blocked out what little so The open umbrella cast shade that made their seating area blocked out what little warmth the sun offered. Plus the wind started picking up. With everything set between them, there was no reason to stick around and Red made the first move. After tossing his cup in the already overflowing trash can, Voy finished his freezing tea and returned the cup to the counter. So, Voy said as they stood outside the cafe door, NaNoWriMo has already started. It's already November 4th. How soon do you think we can get all this started with the contract and everything? Leave that part to me. Red pulled his overcoat together and buttoned it to keep it closed. What we need to figure out is how we're getting the thespia. Do you think there's any next day flights from here? Uh, oh, we can check on flights tonight, that seems easiest, Voy said. His excitement had not even begun to wane since Red agreed to join him. The two said their goodbyes and parted ways, Red digging his keys from his pocket and climbing inside, blasting the heat to warm his hands. It would be another moment before the vehicle warmed up, so he retrieved his phone to search for plane tickets to Thespia. He definitely still felt uneasy. This whole other country sounded strange to say the least and he could feel the hesitation pulling at his stomach and in the back of his mind. However, he would be lying to say that he wasn't at least a little bit excited. It reminded him of when he first... It reminded him of when he first starting out as a narrator. Even though he had his own office and everything, albeit much smaller back then, he loved being out in the field. Instead of main characters coming to him, he went out to find them. At first, he could only net small-time ones, heroes like sheriffs in your standard western genre or half-elves from far-off medieval fantasy land. He managed to work his way up, writing for noir detectives and even a few romance leads and stories that went on to be adapted into feature films and television shows. But even having dealt with so many varied and exotic characters over the years, something about this trip to Thespia felt different. He couldn't put his finger on it. Although, as he put his finger on the link to check flights to Thespia, he found that he might not have to face that odd isolationist country after all. Flights to this location are limited or banned.